Isaac Edelman here, back on Sports Center. It is the big day. It's the off season, so we're going to talk about top ten quarterbacks in the NFL. Obviously, we have our co-host, amazing co-host actually, Sebastian Fernandez and Dylan Paul. We're going to be breaking down the top ten quarterbacks in the National Football League. We're going to start ten through eight. So ten, nine, and eight. Sebastian, who is your number ten? And then we'll go to Dylan. My t my number ten. Not really talked about. I mean. He had a great season last year, but I think he's going to have a better season next year. I mean, it has to be number 10. Jared Goff from the Detroit Lions. You talk about a guy who has so much experience. He went to the Super Bowl. I mean, he, he was flat out amazing. And the Lions with no expectations, you know, everybody thought they were going to be super bad last in the division. I mean, they shocked a lot of people. And they also knocked down the Green Bay Packers from playoff contention. I think they're going to have an amazing season next year. And I think they're going to be one of the best teams in the NFC. So Gar Jared Goff at number 10. All right, Dylan, number 10. Yeah, I think Jared Goff is a solid quarterback. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he does much to elevate his team like a top 10 quarterback would do. Mm -hmm. At number 10, I have Kyler Murray. Now, Murray, people forget that... It was not too long ago where Murray led his team to an undefeated record and he was playing like an MVP candidate with a coach that we can now call a complete failure in Cliff Kingsbury. So Kyler was able to lead that offense and he we, people forget how good Kyler is as a runner and at evading the pocket. And Kyler Murray is easily still a top 10 quarterback in the league and I think that when he comes back from injury, injury he will take the league by storm once again. Let's go to your number 9, Dylan. Yeah, number nine, I have Geno Smith. Geno had an unbelievable year last year. He was one of the best pure passers in the league. His deep ball is absolutely immaculate, and that paired with Tyler Lockett, one of the best deep threats in the game, is unbelievable. So I, think, I expect Geno Smith to nearly replicate, replicate what he did last year. If you told me it was the year 2023 and Geno Smith was a top 10 quarterback, I would be laughing. And actually, if you told me he was a top 10 backup quarterback, I might still be laughing. <laughs> Sebastian, who's your number nine? I mean, you talk about, you know, adversity, Tua Tagovailoa goes through all that adversity. I mean, he's my favorite quarterback in the NFL, so I had to add him in the top 10 quarter, uh, quarterbacks list. He's one of the most disrespected quarterbacks probably ever, and you know, I, he's going to have a top 5 MVP season. If he stays away from any concussions, any injuries, he will definitely move up top of my list. You talk about a pairing, one of the best duos a wide receiver duo was ever, Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. They they elevate to his game in, in extraordinary ways, and I think that's going to help him, uh, you know, um, be an MVP candidate. Mike McDaniel, one of the best coaches in the league, you know, really helped up with his confidence, and I think that's going to be amazing, and I think the Dolphins are Super Bowl contenders going into next season. Okay, so you go with golf and Tua. Who's next? For my number eight, I mean... I, I wanted to put him higher, but I just couldn't. Justin Herbert at my number eight spot. I know a lot of Chargers fans are going to disrespect me and, you know, call me out. But Justin Herbert, I mean, he did a great season last year, but not as good as he had in his rookie season. Obviously, make, breaking so many records. Justin Herbert, one of the best uh, uh, deep, uh, quarter, uh, deep arm quarterbacks. He can throw at long ranges like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, but... You know, when it comes to playoff time, I don't think he's the right quarterback, uh, you know, in those situations. I don't think he's not clutch enough. I think, I think, I, I think Justin, I think Justin Herbert needs to work on, you know, uh, being calm in those situations and trying to uh, uh, lead his team, in, and especially in the fourth quarter, because I, I just think that Justin Herbert um, is not clutch. I, I, I don't think so. So that's my number eight. Sebastian? Tua always drafted in front of Herbert, and you have Herbert in front of Tua. Just let that sink in. Dylan, who's your number eight? Now, I think that having Justin Herbert that low is just plain crazy. Justin Herbert, with all that he has dealt with in his career, with the horrific franchise of the Los Angeles Chargers, I'm sorry, Chargers fans, but that franchise seems to be just cursed. The coach, Brandon Staley, he's not a good coach. He does not know how to call plays, and he should not be a play caller on this team. And with the zero run game that he has had with Austin Eckler just not being a good pure runner, and that is why they have been unable to close out games like the Jaguars game, he is no help, and he is arguably the most physically talented quarterback in the league. I think that Justin Herbert is easily a top four quarterback in the NFL. But for my number eight, 
I'm going to go to the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft with Trevor Lawrence. I almost think Trevor Lawrence should be higher than this, but I just have a bunch of guys above him that I think just take the, take, um, take the lead over him. But Lawrence is incredibly talented. He has amazing physical traits, but he dealt with a lot of bad things in his rookie year that are hard to even talk about. So, yeah, Lawrence with... A full year with Calvin Ridley now in his receiving core, I think he's going to be the eighth best quarterback in the NFL. Okay, that's 10 through 8. We're going to go to a commercial break. Remember, if you go to McDonald's on Tuesday and the Heat win, you get a buy one, get one free uh, deal for a Big Mac. We'll be back after the break. Okay, we're back. We're going to go 7 through 5. But before we do, Zach Cohen, our special guest, our caller. He's a frequent caller, so I'm going to start calling you a guest, okay? <laughs> it works, works for me, guys. Always happy to be on the uh, the Isaac Edelman show with Sebastian and Dylan on ESPN Radio. Uh, you know, I, I've always like wondered about like quarterback wins and whether a stat or not. So I guess my question to the two experts here is: How much do you factor team success into your quarterback rankings? Now it depends on the team around him. Like for a guy like Justin Herbert, it's hard because we see that he has not had the most help around him in his career, especially with the organization and the front office. But I think that wins can be a quarterback stat because I think that quarterbacks can elevate their teams, but in some cases it's just too difficult to win a game by yourself. I'm sure Sebastian's going to say, uh, yes, wins matter because Tua might not be the, have the best performances, but when the Dolphins win, they validate Tua, right? I totally agree. That's all I have to say. I totally agree. All right, perfect. So with that said, let's get into 7 through 5. Dylan, 7th best quarterback in the NFL. Number 7, I have an all-time great in Aaron Rodgers. Now on the New York Jets, I think that that will be a great pairing with him and Garrett Wilson and his former teammates in Alan Lazard and some other guys that were formerly with the Packers. I think that Aaron Rodgers will have major success with the Jets, and I think that he will turn Garrett Wilson into a top five receiver in the NFL. Being an all-time great is one thing. How about being a current great? Who's your number seven? Trevor Lawrence. Right. Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he's he had a breakout season, uh, rookie season. They didn't, really, uh, didn't really do too much. I mean, uh, the players around him were not that good enough, but. Uh, you, you have Doug Peterson, uh, a, a coach who believes in Trevor Lawrence, and that's really what matters uh, for a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Trevor Lawrence had an amazing playoff debut, came back down big time, but you know uh, the second round wasn't really in Trevor Lawrence's favor. But I think going into next season, Kevin Ridley and all the pieces around Trevor Lawrence, uh, the new players, I think they have a great shot of going to a Super Bowl run. So Trevor Lawrence at my number seven spot. All right, number six, Dylan? Yeah, number six, I have Lamar Jackson, the former MVP. Really, we haven't seen him replica replicate what he did in that MVP season since then, but he's dealt with injuries, and he's dealt with a bottom-tier receiving core. Now he has Odell Beckham Jr. Hopefully, Rashad Bateman can get healthy. Hopefully, J.K. Dobbins can stay healthy, because when J.K. Dobbins is healthy, he is dangerous, and when you have multiple good running options on that team, it's going to be dangerous for it opposing defenses. I think Lamar is still an elite quarterback in this league, and he can throw the ball a lot better than some people give him credit for. Okay, you didn't mention Lamar yet, so let's see if you're going to mention that at number six. And that's exactly what I'm going to mention. Number six, Lamar Jackson, 2019 MVP, one of the best uh, throwing quarterbacks. I mean, I feel like no one appreciates his throwing. He's super underrated, can throw uh, deep ball, short ball. I mean, He's super good at throwing, and especially one of his uh, one of his special traits is running ability. I mean, he's one of the best running quarterbacks we've seen since Michael Vick. I mean, he can run anywhere. He can run down, up, zigzag, whatever you want. <laughs> but Lamar Jackson at my number six. I mean, he's super good, super talented, and if the Ravens can stay healthy, they can go a long way. Okay, our last quarterback ranking before we go to break. Dylan, number five. Yeah, number five, I have Jalen Hurts had an MVP-type season last year, and if it weren't for Patrick Mahomes being Patrick Mahomes, he would have won the MVP. Hurts took his team to the Super Bowl and fell just short, but in that game, we really saw who he really was. Put up 35 points on the Chiefs. He played unbelievably in that game, and I still need to see just consistency in terms of having multiple years in a row of that high of play, but I think that Jalen Hurts will be one of the top quarterbacks in the league for years to come. All right, Sebastian, let's wrap with five. I got Aaron Rodgers at number five. 
Ooh, really? And you're a Dolphins fan, too. I know. Uh, I, I really appreciate what Aaron Rodgers has done in his long career. You didn't even have him in the top five quarterback. What? 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 Like, how? Uh, obviously, he didn't have the season uh, we expected uh, at Green Bay. He didn't make the playoffs, got eliminated by the Lions. But how have you not have uh, a 2021 MVP and a top five uh, quarterback list? Like, how? Sebastian, I'm just saying, if you're a Dolphins fan and you have Rodgers in your top five, that's fine, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to be scared of the Jets then because if the Jets have a top five yeah. quarterback in the NFL, uh, the Dolphins might not win the division. Come on. I'm totally not scared of Aaron Rodgers, but the Dolphins have in the bag. I, 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 honestly, we can sweep the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers, you can't discredit what he's done with the Green Bay Packers. He's definitely going to elevate the Jets, and they're definitely making the playoffs. Definitely making the playoffs, but I don't think the Jets have what it takes to beat the Dolphins this year. Awesome. So there you have it. We will finish up our top four after the break. For Isaac Edelman, this is Sebastian Fernandez, Dylan Paul. Tune back in.